Terry, mm -hmm. while you're a master at moving metal, that is not at all the encompassing about the work that you do. You are a designer, first and foremost. So can you walk me through the process of how you start with an idea from a client, a director, a production designer, and move that into the finished product yeah. of metal? Yeah. Um, basically, uh, if a film comes along, it was, it used to always start with a phone call. Now it's horrible emails. <laughs> Very personal. Um, but yeah, in those days, you, know, you get a phone call. Um, let's take, uh, for instance, um, Excalibur. Mm -hmm. um, John Borman, um, they contacted me and I had a meet with John and Tony Pratt, the production designer, and just discussed they wanted uh, so many armors made. And just talking to John, and we had a few meetings doing this, and uh, just discussed, I read the script. Um, hadn't met the actors at that time, but I read the script and talked to John. and got a feel of the, of the movie, the way it's going to look, uh, what John wanted out of it. And you kind of put that together, and you start to, to formulate an idea of a look of something. But then later you, you meet the actors or you know the actors are going to wear it from photographs or mm -hmm. ideally meet them in person. And uh, you then get an idea of their face, the look, the way they stand. Uh, oh, interesting. You, yeah, and you just kind of put all this together. It's like you're say, waiting for it to yeah, click It's like I say, you don't make armour, you build it. You, yeah. In fact, you create it is even a better word. It's a bit like doing a sculpture, a block of marble. And chiseling it away, I mean, it's in there already. Right, right, all yes. You, all you do is expose it. Um, with armour, it's, it's, in a way, it's kind of different because you, you actually build it as you go along. You add to it, you take bits off uh, until the look is right, uh, until you, you're kind of happy with it, you know. And, but often when you do a design and you think, right, that's it, and John likes it, or whoever the director is, or the costume designer, and they love the look of what you've done. And so when I actually start making them, I will actually change that again quite mm -hmm. often. Because right, I mean, it's, it, it, it further evolves as you're yeah, actually building yeah, it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's like a painting or anything in art. Um, it's, all, it's much to do about balance and, and a line, you know. And uh, dare I say, I think that's lost its track a lot, especially in cars, where they're all designed on computers. And, it's driving crazy. And they, yeah, they just lose the line. I mean, the, the most important thing about a really good design or an iconic design is the simplicity of a line right. and the balance of a line. But now, they, it, most cars are like, like a bowl of spaghetti. There's so many lines going on, it's just crazy. Does, did, did, did Borman, for instance, give you ideas about armor that he liked, or did he give you a, a free hand? Uh, pretty much a free hand on it. Um, what we did, in fact, uh, me, John, and uh, Tony Pratt, uh, we went down to the Tower of London for an afternoon okay. just to look at original armours, and we and I actually took different aspects from them. You know, I pointed out things to John about the what they call the halt piece. That no, piece that comes. piece that's called a halt piece. Yeah, I, I noticed that that's fairly. It's not a super common aspect of a lot of armour, but it's really it's really a centerpiece of the, of the Excalibur armour. Yeah, um, the halt piece is actually just a defence to stop a lance going underneath the helmet and piercing okay. the neck. That's the idea of that. So it's, a, it's just another bit of defence, and they were often used on jousting armours. It just um, it looks very. It has this very regal wonderful quality to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Again, with, with, the, with, the, with John, I suggested those because he wanted the, the armour. The first thing he said, he said, I want them to look like American footballers. This is the first primeval part, yeah. of, part of the film, all the black armours. And with the big shoulders, exaggerated shoulders, uh, these things. In other words, they look like tanks almost, but, but primeval, almost like insects, uh, yeah. like, you know, that kind I of feel. I once studied music for a short period of time with a wonderful uh, cellist named David Darling, and he had this axiom mm -hmm. about teaching music. He said, you should seek to be able to sing anything you can play and play anything you can sing. Right. And yeah. you are able to draw anything you can build and build anything you can draw. Yeah. So can, can we take a look? You told me that these are some of your original sketches for Excalibur. I haven't seen them. Can we take okay, a look yeah. at these? It's the first time these have actually ever been seen in public, I think, since 1979. And in fact, um, you want the King Arthur suit made. That's, right? that's the one I'm uh, obsessed well, with. This is the very first design <gasps> that was done for King Arthur. Oh. 
and it was drawn, the, the actual drawing is by Tony Pratt, yeah. and what to my ones, I don't know. But we did the drawings together, mm -hmm. but the ones that actually went up in the production room, the ones that Tony did, which is what these are. And that is actually the, uh, the King Arthur suit. Here we can lay it out just like this. Yeah. And, oh, wow, wow. Oh, I see. So by talking to, to Tony, yeah, we decided we'd put the plaque eight breastplate in, and uh, and, and then, but there again, the input from John, because uh, there was so much fussiness going on, some of the other armors, the rivets and lines and stuff that was going on. We said him being uh, the King Arthur, he wanted to look really actually quite plain, yeah, and very stylized. So that head says no rivets or different lines going on. So we could uh, try to keep it as simple as possible. And it comes out very sleek. The and king. it says emphasize shoulders. And it really is the shoulders yeah. are, yeah. they're not bulky, but they really are there. Yeah. Everyone looks yeah. quite erect. Yeah. Well, it's to make them look um, powerful. You know? And it, when, when you're wearing this stuff, um, as Patrick Stewart said to me, he said, uh, he's never felt so good. It improved his role because he felt so powerful in it. And, uh, and that's what it kind of does to you. It makes you, you know, feel like Arnish, Arnish, Arnish what was there? And I, I mean, I'm looking at this, I, I understand that there's dozens and dozens, like 60, 70, 100 separate hammered pieces mm. of metal that make this up. And every one of them has a shape and those shapes all have to work in concert. So this yep. is hundreds of tiny decisions that you're making. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's some of these of them are being made here. But again, as you as you evolve, do you generally have a free hand from the designers to as you're as you're building this, make sure it all works and feels like what they want. Oh yeah, um, at the end of the day, it's got to work. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's why a lot of stuff is made now in film. It's got is made of plastic. Yeah, and, and stuff. And what happens there is that someone will make make a, a clay model up or whatever. Yeah, they take a mold from it, then it's molded in plastic. But it's not the way it works. That's why. I hate to say it, but most films that are made now, in my mind, purely my view, um, don't have that magical look about them. They're, they're too, again, like cars, they're, they're overdone, they're over fussy, they don't quite work. But the important thing is, if, if an arm is custom built and actually made to fit you, like it was then when they wore this stuff back in the 15th century, yeah, um, because it's part of you and, and you can move in it, that's what makes it look right. You know, it's like wearing a cheap suit. <laughs> you know, yeah, you don't right. look good. And it's still a hundred. It's a hundred tiny decisions exactly. that all work together. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Everything has to work. So you you make them as unrestricted as possible, so they can get on with their acting rather than thinking about oh that bit's pigeon. That's you know, yeah. And you're not restricted to the past to ancient armor. You've also worked on science fiction movies. I mean, the Alien Colonial Marine <coughs> armor yeah. from Alien. <coughs> mm. This is Jim Cameron's sequel to Alien, and you built the armor for this. Can you talk about the design process well, yeah. of that? Uh, basically, um, Jim, because Jim, Jim uh, have you ever met Jim? I have, I know. Oh, he's a lovely man. Yeah, he is. Um, one of the old school directors where they don't only know about directing a film, they know how to cut a film. But with Jim, he was an incredible designer as yeah. well. I mean, some of his drawings are just mind blowing. And I met him up at Pinewood Studios, did a recce on the job. And, uh, and he actually gave me the drawings, or copies of the drawings I've still got, of his design for this. And, uh, but what happened was uh, they'd had them made in uh, fiberglass. And Jim just didn't like them. I mean, they were pretty awful, to be honest. And I was called in at the very last minute to say, can you, can you make these better? And I said, well, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I kind of got the job. Oh, but but so by then, right, right. I only had three weeks to make 24 sets. <gasps> Put that out. <laughs> you know? And uh, so I took Jim's designs and, and kind of redesigned them, but, but kept his look, yeah. if you know what I mean. Um, there's certain things about gyms that wouldn't quite move as well as if it was done, you know. So you make alterations so it works, basically. So he's but, giving you an aesthetic, yeah. but you're helping understand, that, because you're also an engineer, right? That's, yeah. You're also yeah. engineering how it moves with yeah, the body. Yeah, 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 very important. It's like Jim, our brother Jim, you met, he's an incredible car designer, and, uh, but it's like you can design the most wonderful car, 
but if there's not enough room to sit in it, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like Jimmy, he had to do plastic men that he would put on and do the design around them so you knew that people could get in it. Right. But a lot of the stuff that's done now, and they seem to disregard that aspect. You know? So you came back to Cameron and said, here are the ways in which it's going to be different. So yeah, this is, actually the, the uh, this is actually the prototype one, the very first one I made. Which I, cause oh, I, wow. I used to have a big restaurant, and this was part of my display. <laughs> so I actually turned it into, into the Hicks suit. But originally, that was just the prototype one, that I've, the very first one I made. And, uh, and the rest of them, that's where I built all the patterns from, got the patterns and ideas from. So I only had three weeks to do them. And uh, I think I had about three or four people on cutting out and doing beads, and I was doing all the finishing and finer part of it. And you're also doing things like adding small details that well, lend themselves no, to that's character? An, that's another interesting story because I, I'd finished them all and went, went up to Pinewood Studios where we established a workshop. And Jim was actually passing by one day and saw them. He said, wow, you know, loved them. But he said, I want you to dress all the guys, you know, Bill Paxton and Michael Beard, in the armors uh, so I can have a look at them this afternoon. So I dressed them all and had them all in the dressing room. And Jim came in and looked at him and said, great. He said, there's one thing. He said, it's, um, I want it to see a bit like the Vietnam kind of war art, you know, the helmets and stuff and the uniforms. He said, I want you to uh, go with Terry down to the shops and just buy different things that you want put on, like logos and like Bill Paxton chose the skull and crossbones or glory. Yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. And, uh, and Mike, Michael wanted the heart with the padlock on it. Yeah. So that's how that came about. But having been an artist and also a sign writer for a couple of years, uh, every bit of writing you see on that film that's on the guns, the, the pilot's helmet flying oh, in, yeah. every bit of that is done by me. The smart so, gun has yeah. writing. You did all went, of that. Yeah, I just went around the whole lot with the new sign writing that's brushes. That's amazing. did the whole thing, yeah. <laughs> so there's yeah, a lot of aspects to, to what I do. And a lot of people think, oh, he makes armour. It's, it's a little it's a bit... Bigger than that. <laughs> yeah. Can you give me an idea? Can we can we maybe ideate a, a sort of a fantasy armor to give me an idea of, of how you do how you go about that design yeah. job? Well, again, you know, in an ideal situation like this, okay, let's assume you you want an armor built for yourself, okay? So I know what you look like, and uh, so what I would do. It's a bit funny drawing at this angle, which would be the mm -hmm. I thought it was that perspective, but it's um, it's roughly getting a. Just getting a, a rough proportion. That's what we're drawing here. Yeah, so I will kind of take your shape, mm -hmm. look at the way you stand. And it's, it, then, I, that, then I would like an input, so it's like input from you. So I, I can draw, say, a standard kind of breastplate you know, that there's, everything's got to conform to. Which is basically that, right? Allow a skirt, probably coming off from here. So we take a basic breastplate, right? And I'll say to you, what do you see? Do you see um, some shapes in there, like a, an eagle on the front, or? Or some spikes, or what? yeah, I, I think about the helmet. I think uh, I, I, I'm thinking about the fact that often in movies, villains' helmets tend to be more blocky than the heroes' helmets. The heroes' helmets feel more human. Mm -hmm. But I've always loved the idea. I like I love it when helmets have horns, but I don't know if I've seen a helmet with like almost like antlers. You know, where it's ah. where it's like half animal, half man. I did do that for Sean Connery. Did you? Oh, for the. Green Knight, I made it, I made aluminium antlers came out. I yeah, have not the, the seen, it's is. the sort of the Valiant, right. right? Yeah. I have not seen that film, yeah, not, oh my goodness. Not many people have, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't Sean's best film. <laughs> Bless you, Sean. Um, yeah, so obviously it's important you get the proportions of the head right and mm -hmm. the hands and the eyes, so you know where all that's going. And you've got the chin and the jawbone and the ears. So it's roughly kind of um, so what do you see antlers coming out? Yeah. You're going to do something like this. Um, how do you see the face? Do you see a face? Do you see a, a, an animal? Or um, I see I see eyes, or the I see that it has eyes, but maybe, but it's not friendly. So right. perhaps no rest so you want of it the to be face. A bit menacing. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let me get me goggles on. Let's <laughs> see what I'm doing. Um, okay. Do you see kind of a jaw with teeth or? 
I see a chin. A chin. Chin and eyes and yeah, not okay. a jaw, not teeth or a mouth, but. Okay, let's see where we go here then. I think kind of heavy brows going over. Right. So that's very. The eyes could be. Almost. Is that kind of. Oh, yeah. Working? Yeah. yeah. We come out with this. It's going to be very. Best drawing I've ever done, by any means. Hmm? Not the best drawing I've ever done. Uh, let's see where it goes. And some sort of breathing holes in there. A bit more angular. As you kind of work it as you go along, yeah. you see more of an angle kind of here. And I don't actually like this very much, to be honest. Um, but then we can see these kind of antlers coming up. Yeah. Is that kind of working? Yeah. I mean, I'm seeing as you're adding lines on the face that I can see that you're yeah, you're really also working. engineering in your head as well as you're designing. Yeah. You're thinking about what the what the metal can do yeah. and also what effect That's it's going to have. Yeah, it's all about lines as well. You know, balance. That's why I don't like this very much. It's like wrong there somewhere. I'm not quite sure why, but get rid of it. Um, a bit too soft at the moment. I don't know if I did that. I don't like that either. You just keep, <laughs> see, that's yeah, exactly what you do. You keep kicking it around so you, so you find a, an angle. It's a bit weird. It's like the uh, simple thing, like uh, Mr. Freeze. Mm -hmm. And it's got this chest piece. And the original idea was that uh, you saw him underneath it. He's supposed to be in, in this uh, fluid, this frozen state, uh, cryobonic. What do they call that word? Cryo Cryogenic. That's the word. <laughs> Don't forget that word. <laughs> and so the idea was they had, they had plexiglass windows with this fluid in it. Yeah. And he had blue frozen type makeup on. So you actually see him breathing underneath it. So the windows, you could say, okay, um, he's got a chest, chest piece. Let me turn this. Get away, I don't like what's going on here. I'll come back to that. <laughs> okay. And um, so, so look at the, um, the Schwarzenegger breastplate or Mr. Freeze, Arnie. So. <laughs> um, he basically kind of did that. Then add uh, his powerful chest. His pectorals. Pectorals, yeah. He kind of did all this stuff. He had lines going through it. <clears throat> when it comes to the windows here, you think, okay. Um, a right, window. It's a window, isn't it? But it don't look good. Right. So you kind of design a window. And it's about getting a line that kind of works. And when you start doing things like that. Right, right. And then you have the nipple there. <laughs> then, because it's, it almost makes it start looking like it's sort of stretching away. Yeah. So you bring the lines of that in, which taper. So there's, there's never... Um, a straight line, hardly. In it. And this, I mean, the the anatomical aspect of the engineering yeah. is this is information you learned from yeah, from all, ancient armor and taking it into this yeah, futuristic it's all about character. Lines. You know, lines that balance. Yeah, that's not particularly brilliant actually. <laughs> I've got to be drawing it all today. But in the same but, way that when you're doing the placard and it's matching with the shoulders and those lines are are, are, are yeah. moving together yeah. across the whole thing, yeah. you're paying attention to all those aspects. Yeah. If we, I'm now looking at your face very much and getting what's happening there because I can see this, this, because you've got a beard. That, that's looking really scary. That's yeah, yeah, I see it with the planes that yeah. are coming on. Now we get more like Planet of the Apes. And this starts coming down. Now you've got something that looks so like it might have been human, but is also something totally other. Yeah. You can have like a grill thing going on in there. Still, don't yeah, yeah. Particularly like it, but again, bring the brow the right out. But, but you see the way it's, it's started to change already. Yeah, you know, and I'm starting getting close to something that might work. And 
Bear in mind these are going to be very black, but right there you're going to see your eye almost in the distance. Right, right. That's kind of... Yeah. And you kind of come off from that, and then you can have different plates that come off from here. I think you'd have some large shoulders, but... Yeah, piece these right up. You know, just really come up with those. Wow. Then like things a, start to, almost start, like a bat wing. Yeah, and then things start to happen, you know, you can put yeah. the, the other lines in here. Wow. Yeah, if you want to, you, can, you could stick some spikes in it if you wanted. I love spikes but, on shoulders. I yeah. don't know why. I've always liked spikes on yeah. shoulders. <laughs> then, <laughs> yeah. then the other arm, I would probably do slightly different. Perhaps bring it in not so high. And that's common in armor yeah. that they're not bilaterally symmetrical. Is so, like for, for jousting no, armor, no, one right. shoulder's vastly well, different well, than the other. Always lance, you always have the lance over the horse, mm -hmm. so you're always jousted left to left. And so this, this side of the armor was the part that was going to receive most of the blows, so this was much heavier and more armored. There's sometimes a great big gauntlet that's actually swept all the way up. Oh, wow. And helmets. And the helmets only had a tiny slit in them, so you could only see when you were looking forward. But on point of impact, they straight the head. So there's no way the lance could go in the eye. So it's all a bit of a science in many ways. Um, but yeah, you can see things are starting to happen already. It's like, mm -hmm. And then that, on that one, yeah, this he's, one's so this powerful. This one's not as powerful, but you make it powerful by putting a halt piece in there, which kind of does that. And it's totally clear this is a villain. Yeah. Instantly. Yeah. This is not a this is not your this is not a friendly. Hmm. And once you start getting on onto um, Getting this look right, that's not right yet, but you know, we're near. But once you start building this and you kind of get the feel of this, right. you then start building that into, into this, into the breastplate, so you can start doing some stuff with that. You know, it could be a, a kind of a thing like that. So that's a separate plate. Yeah, that yeah, lies yeah. On, and that'll have roots in it and stuff. <laughs> so you usually start to build oh. it, you know, and it's um, quite wasted because it gives this more powerful look coming out. Right, right. It looks taller, looks yeah. bigger. Same as the arm pieces, you know, these can, um, sorry, yeah, so the left is always bigger than the right. Um, a bit like gladiators that were often only wore the greave on the, on the leading foot. Right. Same as the arm, the sword arm was the one that was armoured, the other one was totally bare. The one holding the shield. Thought, yeah. Okay. So you can have uh, pieces like uh, you know, the elbow piece, called an elbow cop. Now that could come right out and a big spike on it. This could be quite powerful, even bigger. You know, I'm doing it already, I'm building it. Yeah, so yeah. It becomes much bigger. So all this is now becoming a very solid. And then the gauntlet come down and that can be, again, more like that. So it actually forms part of the arm coming in. Wow, wow. And then it flares out to the actual hand. It's amazing. And the fingers coming off from here. It's just like a, it's like a, it's just a helmet's, helmet's way too small actually. That's, what's, that's one of the main things that's wrong with it. It could be up here somewhere. That's, that's, that's why we were drawing <coughs> like that. Right, and you just run through sketch yeah. after sketch after Otherwise sketch. Otherwise it's, it's all out of proportion. Yeah, yeah. But that's basically what happens. You kind of look at the face. Uh, that's where I got that line from. It's quite distinctive with your beard and the way that comes down. Your brows are quite sort of kind of meaty. So you just get a feel. And you try and build as much character of the person into the arm as you can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you see where it goes. That is, <laughs> you know. That's thrilling to watch that process happen on the page. Well, shall we get back to making some armor? That's why you're here, I understand. <laughs> you, uh... <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it.